So joining us now is Mr. Bismarck Rani, CEO of Financial Derivatives Company. Great to have you on the show. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Ladi. So what is the thinking behind um, the, the, the setting up of the oil trading arm um, for the Dangote refinery, um, possibly in London? Um, the biggest trading um, companies, commodity trading companies, are usually headquartered either in London, Geneva, and at times in New York. Uh, basically, the largest traders in the oil space are Trafigura, Vitol, and Glencoe. But generally, Cargill is also um, one of the most recognized uh, trading arms. What does this do? What, what you produce, uh, what you trade, and then things get to the consumers. Because these markets are very highly sophisticated, very volatile, and those, trading, those traders provide a lot of service so that the end users can buy into the futures market and buy forward contracts and, and can do everything. But uh, I think when you have a 650,000 barrel a day refinery, it is not out, it's not outside the realm of reason that you should prepare yourself to trade. Even if you don't have your own trading arm, you will have to rely almost entirely on the efficient trading companies. So what happens in Nigeria today, the three leading trading companies, like I said, Vitor, Trafigura, and Glencore, they have uh, what they call the uh, refined swap arrangements with Nigeria, where they buy our food and give us in return refined products at an agreed ratio. That has not been the most efficient structure, uh, the way it has been happening, but really, um, this is the way to go. And I think it only makes the Dangote uh, complex, that is a refining complex, much more efficient in terms of not having to worry about when prices go against them and when traders try to speculate against them. But de definitely, it's something that is, is a major development. But let me make it clear that in addition to having the trading infrastructure, which is, we also need to have the physical infrastructure. In other words, pipelines from Esparvos to the refinery and pipelines from the refinery to different depots, not only in Nigeria, but in West Africa. So there's a lot to come. The $24, $25 billion investment uh, now is just the beginning of many things to come. So, like I said, this is a major breakthrough for Nigeria and a major breakthrough for the Dangote Group. And how does this um, uh, trading arm play into the plans of, you know, the Dangote refinery exporting, you know, refined products and also um, settling um, local demand? Yes, there's no question about that. Uh, I think the trading arm makes uh, the Dangote refinery complex much more efficient in terms of you don't have to worry about oh, that. Okay, maybe I'll have to um, let me cut my production because the demand is not there. The trading arm will tell you precisely what the future demand for the next three, four, six months are for one, a PMS, two, diesel, three, um, methane, and all the other things that come out of the fractional distillation column. But to answer your question directly, I think that the Dangote group will benefit at least, and the, especially in the West African region, so that it has no, it doesn't have to worry about what's happening in Ghana, what's happening in Niger, what's happening in Senegal, Ivory Coast, because this refinery has a hub, is a hub for both West and Central Africa. So it's a it's a major and very positive development for one for commodities, two for supply, and three for prices. All right, talking about um, prices now, we see oil prices are up um, in early trade um, today. Where are you seeing oil prices um, in this uh, month of March? And um, definitely with prices, you know, looking like they want to tend up, definitely that will impact um, uh, how much uh, uh, the, the refinery, does the doctor refinery actually gets um, this product? No, I think uh, you know, the focus for the year is that Prices were average at about 78 to $81 as Brent. And oil markets by nature are very volatile, and it depends on a number of things. You know, Jer Jerome Powell spoke yesterday about uh, at what point in time they would have to start bringing down interest rates in the U.S. By the moment you start bringing down interest rates, the dollar begins to weaken, and when the dollar weakens, then the price of oil, nominal price of oil begins to increase. So there are many variables that go into price of oil. But for us in Nigeria, what we are looking at Today, the most important variable, apart from the price of crude, is the price of diesel. Diesel, as of this morning, was going at about 14, that is 
2451. It kind of uh, always, always kind of, um, it's a proxy mainly for one, the deregulated price of petrol, and two, for the value of the Nigerian currency. When the Nigerian currency weakens, the price of diesel depreciates. When it appreciates, the price of diesel actually it actually increases uh, or reduces. So uh, that is one thing that we need to watch, and that has a knock-on effect onto price inflation and food inflation because the logistic costs come in. As you can see from the slides there, uh, you can see that the price of domestic commodities have actually spiked again on the fear that the Naira is about to fall. Uh, our view is that the Naira is not about to crash. The Naira is going to be creeping, up, creeping back and uh, we see some slight appreciation in the horizon. If we, we if that slight of appreciation actually manifests itself, I think that you are going to see those prices begin to uh, begin to trend downwards. Why do I say this? You know, uh, two weeks or three weeks ago, Olam and Flam's uh, Premier Feed sent out notices to all the Sogam and Mays um, producers and sellers that they are not going to buy anymore. And from that point, when they, when, they, when they put up that resistance, we find that the price of maize and sorghum actually declined by as much as 20%. So we are getting to the point where there's psychological resistance, there's income resistance, and there's, there's actually technical resistance in the market. But that doesn't mean that the prices crash. It only means that the prices begin to move towards their equilibrium value. That's what we are seeing. Uh, you did uh, mention uh, Jerome Powell um, earlier, and definitely we've seen, you know, a lot of chatter about um, the U.S. Fed, you know, cutting rates sometime in 2024, even though investors globally don't really have a definite time, you know, when that's um, going to happen. But if it does happen, it, does it mean that um, in 2024 we might see a weakness um, for the U.S. dollar? Um, that's against um, a basket of other top um, currencies. <clears throat> Yes, I think clearly you have to understand something. Anytime, once it's three months to an election in the U.S., which is in November, the Fed will be, it will be impossible for the Fed to make any move which will not be politically interpreted as politically motivated. Therefore, I know in the month of March that there's not going to be a, a, a reduction, but we expect that in the month of April, May, probably, and June, we will see a reduction of maybe 25 basis points and another 25 basis points. If that happens, that helps to reduce interest rates, it helps to reduce mortgage rates, and it's a good signal for the voters. Uh, as you know, Joe Biden has been facing a lot of pushback as to the fact that in spite of the good economic news, the people do not feel it, just like in Nigeria, people, there's bad economic news, there's a bad feeling, and also people are becoming very restive. In the U.S., they have not, it's not, they're not being restive, but they are being, they are generally unhappy and un, unenthusiastic. Uh, so, to answer your question clearly, we, I think that by June we start to see a reduction in interest rates, begin to see slight weakening of the dollar, begin to see a, a gradual increase in the price of oil, but not more than the, the range of 80 to 81 dollars for Brent. And therefore, generally, we are going to be in a generally stable uh, global economic environment, except something unexpected happens in Gaza or in uh, Ukraine. But generally speaking, we expect some stability in this uh, area. As if I may use this opportunity of thinking, I think that if that happens and Nigeria uh, tries to refinance, which I think is almost imperative, refinance some of its external debt obligations, that should give um, <clears throat> our creditors some comfort. And with creditors, if they have some comfort, then they begin to look, take another look at Nigeria, because as you said earlier on, the Nigerian stock market has been all over the place like a yo-yo. One, because of because uh, people are reporting extraordinary losses due to exchange rate translation effect, but also because there's a general sense of apprehension, uh, economic apprehension and anxiety. When this begins to calm down, maybe uh, we'll begin to see some light at the end of the tunnel. All right. Uh, and, and definitely, I'd, I'd like to get a sense of what you're seeing for um, domestic uh, commodity prices in the month of March. Do we see some <clears> kind <throat> of yes, um, uh, stability coming? We see. What we are seeing is that domestic commodity prices are edging upwards, but there's a lot of price resistance. Two things are happening. One, you know this new rule about uh, searches and not selling 
because a lot of miniaturization has meant that demand for commodities has remained strong because they can buy smaller packets. But now with this miniaturization issue taking place, a lot of suppliers are beginning to say, okay, that means we can only sell in big, big uh, quantities. Big quantities means you need more cash flow. The more, because the people are under pressure, so we are seeing some resistance there. And therefore, I do not think that you're going to have runaway inflation in the month of March. We are going to see creeping up inflation towards 31 percent. I think you know, about 30.5 to 31 percent. That's what you're going to see. But you, in some particular areas, look at rice. We are seeing it at 80,000. I don't think it can go much higher. Although there's Ramadan and Easter this month, uh, noodles are totally out of reach at this point in time, and eggs. Uh, going at 4,500, basically almost almost 200 naira for one egg. So we are beginning to see this, but I think we've got to the point of technical and income resistance. Uh, what do I think will happen? The negotiations or the minimum wage is going to, you know, going to get intense. And based on that, and when it's going to be implemented and the date, effective date, those things will play into the price level. For now, we expect prices to remain elevated, but not running away from us as it has happened in the last two, two months. So uh, the good news is that the rate of increase in prices is going to slow somewhat. But the bad news is that people do not have the income to buy it. And as long as the dollar is uh, it's appreciated, naira appreciated in the last month or so, uh, if it stays stable, then prices remain stable. If the naira falls again, uh, which we do not expect to happen, then it will reflect itself in domestic quantity prices. All right, definitely. We hope uh, prices don't run away from us again <laughs> this uh, month of March. Thank you so much. Always great to have your perspective, Mr. Bismarck Rwani, CEO of Financial Thank Derivatives you for Company. Me. Thank you so much. All right, uh, we'll take a break now. When we come back, we uh, get a sense of opportunities uh, with fintech startups in Africa for 2024. That's in a moment. Just stay with us. Mm -hmm.